Hi, this is Charlie Hesser from Tropical Birding and welcome to this virtual bird tour of the Philippines. I first went to the Philippines over 20 years ago um, and in my opinion it's one of the most exciting birding destinations in Asia. There's over 600 species of birds been seen here and 247 of which are endemics and that is a staggering degree of endemism. Um, it's had a reputation to be quite a, a grueling birding destination but as you're going to see in this um, virtual tour, um, that's only certain parts. And that has led us to design um, a new itinerary called Easy Philippines. That includes the easiest and best parts in the main tour. So it's, it's now a, a place that everybody should be able to go and get lots of endemics. On the first slide here is a Palawan peacock pheasant. A really stunning bird on the island of Palawan. Let's start as ever with a map of the Philippines. And um, the Philippines is located in Southeast Asia and it's sort of sandwiched between Taiwan and Borneo in the South China Sea. There are 7,000 islands in the Philippines and we're just going to visit a few of the uh, larger ones. The tour starts in the capital of Manila, um, a huge sprawling metropolis. It's not one of my favorite cities in the world to be honest, but it's the city that connects all the other parts of the Philippines. We are going to start the tour with a pre-tour extension to the Visayan Islands. The Visayas are these sort of medium-sized islands um, in the middle of the Philippines. And we're going to visit three islands, Bohol, Cebu and Negros. There are many endemics to these islands, to individual islands or groups of islands, and we're going to be searching for those. So we're going to start on the island of Bohol the city of Tagbilaran. Bohol is quite a popular tourist island and some nice beaches here and they still got some quite nice stands of forest and some really interesting endemics. We're going to start the tour, actually not looking for a bird but uh, a mammal. We're going to visit the Philippine Tarsia Sanctuary. Um, this is the entrance area. So you can see there's some nice habitat nearby. Um, and sometimes in here we can see uh, maybe our first Philippine endemic. This is the Philippine frogmouth, and often these interesting birds nest in the gardens of the, of the sanctuary. We're going to go on a little uh, short guided tour. Uh, there's just a little loop trail and the local guide takes us around and they've got all the little hiding spots for the Philippine tarsiers all staked out. So you know, they'll show you a whole bunch of them, you know, five or ten of them, and you get really nice photos and really good views of them. They're adorable little things with these huge eyes. Good, uh, good start to the tour. There was a little sign up there sort of likening them to uh, Yoda, but uh, I'm not quite sure if that's that fair. Certainly got the ears. On to birding. We're going to now drive along some of the forested roads. There's lots of sort of gravel roads crisscrossing Bohol, and there's some really fantastic birds that we can look for there. This is one of our big targets on Bohol, the Azure Breasted Pitta. Absolutely stunning and um, fairly common. It's not always easy to see, but we've definitely got a good chance to see it. And Bohol has actually got a bird named after it, the Bohol Sunbird. Unfortunately, I didn't get a picture of the male, but here's a female on some flowers, so that's another target. Um, some regular Philippine endemics, like the Philippine Serpent Eagle. This is the Visayan Wattle Broadbill. Um, named after this big broad blue wattle around the eye. Really fascinating birds, really beautiful. Um, we saw some really interesting behavior of this one. Um, we actually saw three females sort of, they seemed to be almost lecking. They were sort of displaying amongst themselves with a sort of male watching. It's not something I've seen written about anywhere before, but uh, it just shows you there's a lot still to um, find out about the birds in the Philippines. This is one of the many kingfishers we're going to be seeing on this trip. It's called the Rufus Lord Kingfisher. It's fairly common by voice, but uh, very difficult to see. It just sits very still up in the canopy, and uh, it requires a bit of um, a bit of field craft to track them down, but sort of uh, locate the core. There's a few mammals um, on Bohol as well. This is the um, long-tailed macaque. It's an um, endemic subspecies. This is a Philippine pygmy squirrel, tiny little thing. This looks just like a big lump on the tree trunk, but it's actually called the Philippine flying lima. It's not a lima, it doesn't fly. It glides from tree to tree, runs up, and it's strictly nocturnal, but um, we 
often see them um, at a stakeout in Bohol. At the lodge that we stay at, the, the gardener often keeps tabs on some owls, and sometimes we'll get um, the, our first owl, the Everett's Scops owl, um, on a day roost. We are also going to visit a bit of a tourist site called the Chocolate Hills. You can see these very unusual shaped hills here. This is a viewpoint that we visit to look over these hills. I guess they go a little bit brown in the dry season. Um, and yeah, it looks a bit like chocolate, but um, you can see the very um, interesting features. Here's a sign telling you um, how you can best experience the Chocolate Hills. Um, and this is me trying to do my little bit as a tourist. From Bohol, we're now going to visit the next island along, which is called Cebu. Uh, you can see Bohol is sort of a uh, round shape and Cebu is very long and thin. You see they're quite close to each other, so we can actually take a boat across. Here's a boat that we go in. It's a sort of sealed speedboat. It's very quick um, and we'll be on Cebu in no time. We're just visiting one site on Cebu and it's called Tabunan Forest. We just spent one night and early the next morning we'll go up to Tabunan. Cebu has been absolutely devastated by deforestation. It's almost um, completely deforested. There's only a very tiny patch of native forest left. Despite being almost completely deforested, Cebu still has endemics on it. This um, is the Cebu flower pecker. When I first went to Cebu 20 years ago, um, I went up there and I heard the Cebu flower pecker and I was with uh, two other people, um, one on each side, and, and both of them actually saw this bird. I saw a movement and I heard the bird. It now appears that the Cebu flower pecker may be extinct. It hasn't been seen for many years now. People are very worried. There are still some Cebu endemics left though. We're going to leave in the dark and get up there to look for the Cebu Google. We had great views at this last time. It, it came right in and um, posed really nicely for photos. The first time I was in Tabunan, um, there was no ladders or anything. You just had to sort of scramble up the rocks. But uh, now there's been some um, things to help make it a little easier for uh, visiting birders. You can see here we're sort of climbing up these ladders. It's probably a little bit easier than it looks here. Um, there's quite a few um, common birds still left, but uh, localized subspecies. This is uh, the white eared brown dove, which is very um, widely distributed, but it's a local race. Um, this is Coletto, which we're going to see at several places um, on this tour. You can see very distinctive um, bare pink head. We probably won't see the Cebu flower pecker, but we can certain, certainly look for it. Last time I was there, they had a visitor's book, and I looked in the visitor's book. I think we were there in March or April, and I think we were the only the second group to visit the site. It's not a well-birded location, um, and there's still a bit of forest left. The birds have got quite small territories, and a lot of it is quite inaccessible. So I really feel that there's a good chance that this is still out there. Um, I think it just needs some people to go and spend some time and look for the thing. So if you're feeling intrepid, then that's certainly a very worthwhile thing to do. From Tabunan, we're gonna go back to Cebu City and then fly to the next island of Negros. We fly into the city of Bacolod. Um, 20 years ago, I spent a couple of months in Bacolod or in this area doing bird surveys. So it was, um, it was really nice to get back there. The first place we're going to visit um, is a volcano um, in the sort of center of Negros called Mount Canlaon. There's different ways you can do this. You can hike up it from the bottom, which is a real killer, or you can drive up a road which goes up the side. Uh, there's a geothermal power station on Mount Canlaon, um, and they granted us access, so we were able to sort of um, just bird from the road, which was a real advantage. This is us birding along there, and as you can see, there's still some very nice forest up there and with some nice birds. And there's been a lot of splitting being going on in the Philippines, but I think there's still some to come. This is uh, one of the Philippine birds, a balakashao, but the one in the, on Negros has got a white belly. Um, very unusual and a good candidate to be split in the future. This is one of the endemics 
to the, the Sires, the uh, Negros and Panai, it's called the White Winged Cuckoo Shrike, and it's going to be a big target for us there. There's a group of parrots in the Philippines called Racket Tails, uh, small green parrots with these kind of tail wires with a little racket on the end. This is the uh, Blue Crown Racket Tail. This is a really big pigeon, the um, pink belly Imperial Pigeon. We had great views of this last time. Really spectacular bird. We should see a few other common uh, flocking species as well, like uh, the island flycatcher. This was before considered to be a vertebrate flycatcher, which is common in Southeast Asia, uh, but has now been split. Some of the birds we might see, a uh, little pied flycatcher. And this is uh, maybe the main target of Kanlaon. It's called a flame templed babbler, really stunning bird. I, I didn't get a photo of it, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, really uh, distinctive and um, orange brown. From Mount Kanloan, we're going to move a little bit lower down to a place called Mambukal. This is a hot spring resort. It's sort of at the, at the base of the mountain uh, before you get down to the um, all the fields, the agriculture at the bottom. Mambukal has still got some nice, um, nice trees in there, a bit of nice forest, um, and we'll spend a bit of time birding in here for lower elevation species. This is one of the birds that we're going to be looking for. It's called the Black Belted Flowerpecker. It's recently split from the Red Keeled Flowerpecker. It's got this nice um, black mark, black edging to the, uh, to the red chest. The first time I was in the Philippines, this was considered the Philippine Bulbul, but it looks very different and sounds very different and has since been split as the Visayan Bulbul. They had a little bridge over a stream in Mambukal that had lots of glossy swiftlets nesting underneath. And there was also a colony of flying foxes there. They had two species, the island flying fox and the golden crown flying fox. So we had really good views of them. The Filipino people are very uh, friendly. Um, you're constantly getting people coming up to you and, and asking to have your picture taken with them. Um, they're very uh, wonderful people. Uh, a lot of them are English speaking. It was, an, it was an American colony for many years. The next day, we're going to um, drive up to our last site on Negros called the Gawahon Eco Park, um, which is on the lower slopes of Mount Silai. This is the road that goes up to Gawahon, um, so we'll be moving along this um, road, birding along there, and it gets into some more humid forest higher up. This is the uh, entrance sign to Gawahon, and there's a few nice little um, waterfalls and things up there. Some of the birds we're going to be looking for include the Visayan fantail, which is split from blue-headed fantail. And another big target is the Negros jungle flycatcher, which we had really nice views of. From Negros, we're going to fly back to Manila, um, where we'll meet up with people that are joining the main tour. We're going to start our birding at a small park um, in Quezon City, just next to Manila. Um, and here we can start picking up our first common birds at the main tour. This is the entrance to the Eco Park. Um, it's quite a popular place with walkers and joggers and cyclists and stuff, but we'll get there first thing um, to get some birding in. This is it's quite a big place. There's some nice grassy areas and uh, big trees, and there's some more shady areas as well where we'll be looking for some other species. This is one bird we might see there, the blue-tailed um, bee eater. Uh, and on some of those grassy areas I showed you, you might see some barred rails coming out in the early morning. This is a bird that's um, it's probably our best chance on the tour to see. It's called the Ashi Thrush. Um, it's fairly common in there, but um, a little bit secretive, but we should get uh, looks at it with a bit of um, effort. And we may also see our first Guayabero. It's a small little um, endemic parrot. You can see it making a little nest here in an um, arboreal termite mound may also see the small uh, Philippine woodpecker. From La Mesa, we're going to drive south. We'll have to drive through Manila, which usually takes a while, but we're going to drive down to the university town of Los Baños. Um, it's a very chilled town, a lot less bustling than, uh, than Manila. We're going to use Los Baños as a base to bird Mount Makiling. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, forest preserved on this mountain, and it's really one of the top birding sites of the tour. We're going to start in the botanical gardens um, and you can see a lot of 
big trees in here and um, really nice birding a few of the trails as well so we'll start a birding in there there's a few nice little waterfalls in there um, and on the little streams coming through the botanical gardens we're going to look for the indigo banded kingfisher really beautiful little bird um, in the gardens and some of the fruiting trees we might also see philippine hanging parrots and another target in the gardens are the philippine um, falconets the next day we're going to visit Mount McKeeling Rainforest Park. They don't allow us up in there with our own vehicle, so they provide us with this um, wonderful looking jeepney. Jeepneys are one of the ways that people get around in the Philippines. It's a form of public transport. They sort of converted jeeps. They're painted lots of bright colors. They're very fun to see. Um, but yeah, it's quite an experience bumping around in the back of one of these. We're going to go in in the dark and look for the uh, Philippine scops out in the early morning. Then we're going to drive up as high as we can and go in search of the um, spotted kingfisher, spotted wood kingfisher, which calls in the early morning. They're, um, they sit very still, so they're quite hard to find, but uh, we should have a good chance. This is what the habitat looks like up there. We're going to be birding along this track, and as you can see, there's very nice um, forest up here. This is another bird that we can look for up there, the black-chinned fruit dove. It's quite a um, widespread bird, but never easy to find. Last time we were lucky enough to find one sat on a nest. Um, one of the big targets up there is called the striped-sided rhabdornis. Um, the rhabdornises used to be in their own family, and then they were subsequently lumped with the starlings. But they're a very distinctive group of birds, and there's always a chance they might be um, split again as their own family. Um, another name for this one was a stripe-headed rhabdornis. Um, there are Philippine trogons up there, um, not easy to find, but uh, with a bit of luck we might come across one of these beautiful birds. If we miss it here, we can also try for it again later on during the trip. This is another big target up there, the scale-feathered malcoa. Really stunning and unique looking bird in the uh, cuckoo family. From Mount Makiling and Los Banos, we're going to drive north. We used to drive way north in Luzon, um, but we've now substituted uh, a new site called Infanta that has a really special bird there. This is what the habitat looks like up there. We're going to be birding along a road, um, some sort of uh, mid-elevation forest. Some of the birds that we might see, this is a brush cuckoo, which is a migrant, and some other residents like um, elegant tit, um, the endemic yellow wattled bulbul, um, the blue headed fantail, and this uh, beautiful Philippine fairy bluebird. The fairy bluebirds are in their own family, um, and there's only two members the Asian and the Philippine. This is our main target up there, it's called the whiskered pitta. This used to be a sort of near mythical bird that you had to do a major hike to go and see, but they've discovered it along this road, and now it's regularly seen along there. From Infanta, we're going to start um, a drive and head up towards Kandaba Bird Sanctuary. On the way, we're going to stop at a stakeout for the Philippine Eagle Owl, really spectacular bird. We had great views last time. Um, we'll go there in the dark and hopefully we should get good views. Um, last time, I heard some squealing and I managed to locate this little nest, which was a nest of a, a Philippine scops owl. And we'll continue on to Kandaba Bird Sanctuary, um, surrounded by farmland, but this is a nice little marshy area full of birds. Here you can see what it looks like um, on the ground. Um, we sort of drive around this, this track and sort of scan, the, uh, scan in there for water birds. Some of the birds we might find are uh, yellow bittern, white brown crake, and uh, we might get some raptors like um, eastern marsh harrier and some male and the female there and some other lbjs like this uh, clamorous reed wobbler and maybe a uh, golden belly jerigony from kandaba we're going to head over to the coast to a place called subic bay subic bay was a u.s naval base back in the day and as you can see, it's got really well um, preserved areas of forest here, which are crisscrossed with lots of um, roads and tracks. So it's um, really excellent birding. 
This is what it looks like um, along the roads. You can see there's pretty nice habitat along here. We normally go along some some quiet um, side roads as well, so we can just stop where we like and um, bird with scopes. So it's really some of the some of the easiest and best birding of the uh, of the main tour. And there's a colony of bee eaters around here. This used to be called the blue-throated bee eater, but it was split as a rufous crown. Bird photography in the Philippines is not very easy. Um, but yeah, we managed to get great um, photo opportunities of these beautiful birds. Another common bird you can see along the um, wires sometimes is a brown-breasted kingfisher, which was um, split from the white-throated. And sometimes we see um, whiskered tree swifts as well. There's also a big colony of flying foxes there. You get um, large flying fox and golden crown flying foxes. Sometimes you even see them flying around during the day. So some of the birds we might see in this area uh, include the Philippine green pigeon, um, another big pigeon, the green imperial pigeon. There's several endemic hornbills to the Philippines. Um, a lot of them are quite rare. This used to be called the Terrific Hornbill, but they split them up. Um, and this is now called the Luzon Hornbill. There's also quite a few nice parrots around here. This is the blue naped parrot, quite a rare bird. And another endangered species, the green racket tail. These um, little tail wires and rackets on the end. And some more skulking birds, like the uh, Rufus Kukul, another endemic. And a really interesting looking woodpecker. It's called the Northern Sooty Woodpecker, all black with a red head. Um, another um, woodpecker we're going to look for is a Luzon Flameback, another one that was um, recently split. And of course a few little birds like this uh, green-backed tailor bird. We're going to come back at night, do a bit of night birding, and maybe uh, early in the morning as well. Uh, this is called the Chocolate Boo Book and the smaller Luzon Boo Book. From Subic Bay we're going to head back to um, Manila. Um, and then we're going to fly out to our next location on the main tour, which is the island of Palawan. Palawan has more in common with um, Borneo and the rest of Southeast Asia than it does with the Philippines. Um, it's got quite a bit of overlap, although it does have quite a few of its own endemic, got 17 endemics. We're going to fly into the capital of Puerto Princesa. The Philippines was also a Spanish um, colony in the past, um, and a lot of the place names and also people's family names are still Spanish names. After arriving, we're going to just head down to the coast and do a little bit of birding, catch a few um, common birds. Some of the birds that we might see in this area uh, include white-breasted wood swallow, um, ammaline swiftlet, and the chestnut-breasted Malcoa. This is not found on the rest of the Philippines, but it is found throughout Southeast Asia. We're going to have lunch um, at a restaurant um, called the Bajau Seafront. And this is a restaurant that we're going to eat lunch in. Um, it's right on the edge of the mangroves, and you can sort of sit here on the balcony and, uh, and bird during lunch. It's really, uh, it's really great. Sometimes you can see birds like common ayora and other stuff as well, um, Philippine pied fantails, and, all sorts of stuff there. From Puerto Princesa we're gonna drive towards the um, town of Sabang um, doing some birding along the way. We'll probably see a few um, jeepneys packed with people and loaded up with stuff. Well, when I first came to the Philippines this is how I often traveled around was sort of on top of a jeepney. Some of the birds that we might see along this road include the uh, great slaty woodpecker, biggest woodpecker in the world. Um, might get another racket tail, the, um, the blue-headed racket tail, and some of our first Palawan endemics, like this yellow-throated leaf bird. This is the lovely sunbird, and another um, sunbird. This is supposed to be the olive-backed sunbird, but it's got this bright orange chest. It looks very, very different from the olive-backed in Southeast Asia, and I think it's probably a good candidate to be split in the future. Um, some of the less colourful endemics, like this sulphur belly bulbul. Here's a Palawan flower pecker feeding on some berries. So we're heading to a viewpoint, cockatoo viewpoint. 
Um, we're going to stop along the road here. Um, and then we're going to walk up this little path up to this uh, top of this low hill. And we get a really nice view um, over some mangroves below. Um, and in the late afternoon, you often get Philippine cockatoos flying by. Sometimes they'll even perch in the nearby trees. Philippine cockatoos are a critically endangered species. Very, very few left, but this is a really good place. We've got quite a good chance to see them. From there, we're going to move on to the town of Sabang. We should arrive um, in the evening, maybe in time for a little stroll along the beach. Um, but we stay at a really nice beach resort there, which is um, one of the nicest places we stay on the whole tour. We're going to go out at night, look for the uh, Palawan Scops Owl, very tiny little bird, and also the Palawan Frogmouth. So we've got some pretty important targets at night. Last time we also came across a sleeping hooded pitta, which we've got really fantastic views of. Um, this was, uh, pittas are never easy to see. This is an uh, endemic subspecies to Palawan on the neighboring islands. The next morning, we are gonna go early to the, uh, to the dock and we're gonna get on a boat like this that's gonna take us into the Subterranean River National Park. You can see from Sabang, we just go a short distance along the coast to a very uh, beautiful isolated beach. And here you can see the beach where we, uh, we sort of have a, a wet landing. And here is the entrance to the Subterranean River National Park. You can see we sort of landed on the beach here. And then uh, before we do our boat ride, we can actually walk around a little trail inside that's got some very special birds. This is the habitat inside um, and some of the things we might see. We saw this huge Palawan monitor lizard last time. And uh, some of the endemic birds that we might find are the um, Palawan blue flycatcher, the white vented shama, and this um, is a very special bird called the Palawan peacock pheasant, which I had on the first slide. There was an individual here um, that was seen for many years, probably more than 10 years, called Henry. Um, and the, the guards sort of threw him a bit of rice every day, and he was very tame really fantastic photos. It seems now that um, he's, uh, he's passed away. So seeing this bird is not going to be as easy anymore, but uh, we're certainly going to try. We are going to do a boat ride into the subterranean river. Um, they're very safety conscious here, so they make us put on all these little orange um, life jackets and hard hats. And we get on this boat, um, which takes us um, into this cave. There's no birds in here, but there's a lot of bats. We saw, I think, maybe five or more species of bats in here. We had a really cool snake and there was lots of big spiders and all sorts of cool things. But yeah, it was a very uh, fun experience after our birding. We're gonna head back to our beach resort where we're gonna have a bit of downtime in the middle of the day. Um, and we may want to go and take a little walk along the beach. It's absolutely stunning place, eh? Um, really beautiful sort of palm-fringed beach and just uh, crystal clear water. So it's nice to uh, take a swim or do a bit of snorkeling. There is an interesting bird that's been seen nearby, which is the, uh, the Malaysian plover. It's quite rare. In the afternoon and the next morning as well, we're going to be birding back along the road between Sabang and Puerto Princesa. It's really nice birding along there. And we're going to look for some of the birds that we're still missing. And this is a big target, the Halloween hornbill. And some other typical birds of Asia, like this um, common hill miner. Another endemic, the spot-throated flameback. So from Sabang, we're going to drive back to Puerto Princesa. And we're going to go on to a little island in the lake afternoon and stay until dark called Kana Island and there we're going to go and look for the um, Mantanami Skopsau, it's a bird that's only found on very small little islands. From Palawan we're going to fly back to Manila where we finish the main tour. Those that are joining the post tour extension to Mindanao we're going to take a flight uh, to Mindanao the next day.
Mindanao is the uh, largest island in the south. I'm going to fly into a place called Cagayan de Oro. Um, and from there, we're going to drive to the base of Mount Kitanglad. Just going to spin around here. This is a view of Mount Kitten Glad from the side, and we're going to be hiking up here and camping up there for a few nights. On the way up, on the lower slopes, we may see things like uh, Hyde Harrier, uh, Long Tailed Shrike. All our supplies are going to be taken up by mules. So it's quite rainy at this time of year, and these mules make little holes with their hooves, which fill with water, so it gets very boggy along here. You can normally sort of find your way around uh, without sort of getting your feet deep in mud, but it's uh, it's not an easy hike. It's steep and it's muddy and it's long. Um, on the way up, we may see another special bird, um, another species of Rhabdornis, striped-breasted Rhabdornis. This is our destination. In this ramshackled old house, they uh, have a kitchen where they cook our meals, and this is uh, they have a table where we eat, and there's a little bathroom in there as well. On the second floor, there's a large room where you can sleep with your sleeping bag. Um, alternatively, you can sort of have a bit more privacy in your own tent underneath this tarpaulin. This is the son of the lady that was cooking for us. Once we've settled in, we're going to go and do some birding. Uh, some of the birds we might see up there include this um, bicolored flower pecker, the olive capped flower pecker, mountain leaf warbler, and this very cool apo minor with this very kind of funky crest and yellow wattle around the eye. Another big target up there is the black and cinnamon fantails, often found in mixed species flocks, along with um, island flycatcher. If we get up high enough, we might also have a chance to find another endemic, the grey-capped shrike. We're going to go out at night where we might have a chance to find um, some cool things, like this Mindanao flying squirrel, and maybe another Philippine frogmouth. There's also a couple of scopsail species up there. There's uh, Everett scopsail, which we've seen already, and also the giant scopsail. The main target up there is going to be the Philippine eagle, one of the biggest raptors in the world, critically endangered and absolutely spectacular. The eagles were on a nest um, a while before we got there, um, but just before we arrived, they abandoned the nest, unfortunately. So we were stuck waiting at this viewpoint. Um, while we were waiting, we saw some pretty cool birds. Had this um, beautiful little uh, Philippine falconet. Um, and we were just about to give up and head down when the local guide um, had gone up to check the nest and he found one of the birds had come back to the nest. So we scrambled up there and then we had views across this valley of these birds. I mean, it was it was just the, the highlight of the tour, bird of the trip. Um, it was quite far away, a little bit distant photos, but um, it was well worth the climb. It's really one of the, the top birds um, of our lives. So we were really ecstatic to find that bird and we would just really put a spring in our step on the way down. <laughs> so after seeing the eagle, we, um, we had to hike back down the mountain. From Mount Kittenglad, um, we've now got a long drive down to the city of Davao. Um, and here we just spend um, one night uh, in the base of Mount Palomo, a big volcano. We stay in a nice resort there. It's got some nice birding on the ground. It's got lots of nice habitat. And from there, we also sort of drive up the hill a little bit um, onto the lower slopes of the volcano. Our target here is the whiskered flowerpecker, a very rare and little known bird. Back down in the resort, um, has also been seen the Japanese night heron, an endangered species, super rare bird. So that's another thing to look for in the future. From Davao, we have another long drive up to the town of Bislig. Um, we're going to use Bislig as a base to bird the uh, lowland rainforest of Mindanao. When we arrive, we might go and do some birding at the airport. Um, it was disused at the time we were there. and. It was actually quite good birding. It's a little bit strange birding along a, um, an airstrip. You always imagine a sort of an, air, an airplane is going to come down at any point, but um, yeah, really nice birding. Some of the things we're going to look for there include the Philippine duck, which often fly around that area. Um, and we're going to wait till uh, evening and maybe get uh, Australasian grass owl. We also got one of these uh, Philippine night jars uh, on, the, uh, on the tarmac of the um, runway.
along with Mount Kittenglad, Pickop is really where the Philippines gets its bad name from for grueling birding tours. Um, there's no accommodation close to the forest, and it's about a two-hour drive, and you normally go in there to look for owls before light as well. So this requires a sort of 3 a.m., 3.30 start, but there's some really special birds there. So, so those people that can handle that kind of thing, it's quite an exciting location. Some birds that pick up. Uh, last time we saw some nice Philippine night jars again, but uh, on, a, on a day roost. Um, this is one of the big targets of pickup, the Rufus Hornbill, huge, spectacular bird. Another one of the birds that we're going to be looking for at pickup is a black-faced kukul, another big skulker, um, and some other hornbills as well. This is the uh, Mindanao terrific hornbill, very similar to the Luzon one, but a separate species now. We're going to look for some other more skulking birds, like this striated wren babbler. It's not very good for photography, but when we were there, we found a fantastic flowering tree and it was just full of sunbirds so we got very close and got really nice photos. This is the grey-throated sunbird. We also saw this uh, nice endemic metallic wing sunbird, um, orange-bellied flower pecker, and this very strange looking naked-faced spider hunter. On the way back and um, there's a little pond which is quite a good stakeout for this very unusual looking kingfisher, the southern silvery kingfisher. The last place we're going to bird is a place called the Tuyan Falls. It's a little bit closer to town, so it might, won't require as early a start. Yeah, it's quite a popular place with, uh, with locals as well to come and bathe. Um, it's got some very nice forests nearby. It had been raining so much when we were there, it actually looked like this. It was a real gushing torrent. Some of the birds that we saw there included the uh, yellow-breasted fruit dove, a chestnut-tailed jungle flycatcher, and the final bird of the trip was another gorgeous Philippine trogon. So yeah, that's the end of the tour. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's an amazing location. Um, I hope you've seen that if you want to, you can come and do some fairly easy birding here. And if you want to, you can also do some very difficult birding here. There's amazing things to discover in the Philippines. There's a lot of deforestation here and a lot of very rare birds here. So it's definitely a place to come sooner rather than later. Um, many thanks to my friends that have let me use their photos during the trip. Don't forget to check out my other virtual tours and also those of the other guides. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks again for supporting us.